G'day and welcome to part three of my walkthrough of the 2019 SAC. Um, I've just jumped ahead and done some scribbling on that one there because that question has a problem with it. But this question here, create a graphical display that shows the pricing to show up for the marathon. This is a step graph. Your graph would look something like this. Between, so you would say this is zero, one, two. You'd obviously use a ruler. If it's less than one, it's up here at 120. If it's at between one and two, it would be at 100. And then after two, it would be at 90. So you'd have a step graph that looks like that. The next question, team of 10 people spent 1040 to sign up for the event, provide at least two different combinations of times and ticket prices, 10 people we need to have this amount. Now I've spent a bit of time doing it and I can only get fractional answers or ones that involve negative amounts of people. This is the only one that makes sense. Eight people and two, eight people that between one and two months and then two people less than a month gets you exactly 1040. So let's go to the next question here, which is task four, which is the last part of the question. So runners entering the half marathon are recommended to eat oatmeal and bananas for breakfast before the race. This runner wants to eat the maximum amount of food, but he cannot have more than 150 grams of carbs and 20 grams of protein. In a gram of oatmeal is that much protein and that much carbohydrates. In a gram of banana, there's that much carbo and that much protein. Write constraint equations connecting to the carbohydrates and the protein. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this X and we're going to call this Y. So one gram of oatmeal, so it's X grams of oatmeal, Y grams of banana. So, carbohydrates, 0 0.12 times x plus 0 0.23y cannot, cannot have more than 150. So, we have a maximum here, 150 like that. Next one here, 0 0.02 times x plus 0 0.02y must be less than or equal to 20. So whatever amount of protein that he eats can't add up to more than 20. Then obviously he can't eat a negative amount of food. So x must be greater than or equal to zero and y must also be greater than or equal to zero. When you're talking about constraint equations, they should go in automatically. If they haven't already said a minimum number, assume you're working in a positive number space. Use your CAS to graph the constraints and show the feasible region. Label all lines with their equations. Label the corner points. So, First things first, we need to rearrange our inequality so that we can use our, use our CAS for them. So solve. And again, we want to go to math three. And we want to solve for Y because it's easier to do. That's a mess, but that's fine. We can work with that. Uh, solve, and then we've got 0 0.02X plus x plus 0 0.02 y is less than 100 and sorry less than 20. I'm going to solve that for y as well so we've got that one as well. So now we'll go to our graphs. We're going to take this, drag it down, make sure that we have it pointing the right way. Yep point the right way, grab this other one. Again, you don't want to drag the inequality with it because you, you need to be able to manually set this yourself. So we'll tick both of those. 
we want to put in an inequality there for that. And then we want to do one for X as well. And now when we draw it, well, we need to change our window, don't we? So, So we have our corner pieces here. So we need to obviously figure out where our corner parts are, but obviously this blue region is the region that we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick, we're going to do some quick note taking. So on our, on our blue line, we're going to go zero. And we've got this point here where X is zero and Y is 652.173. So we'll say 652. Because that point is gonna that point is gonna become important in a moment. And now on our CAS, we will keep going. Now, unfortunately, our CAS won't let us um, do much else, but we can move it around. And now what we need to do is we need to find the far most extreme part here, ideally on that green line there. And it looks like at a thousand, There we go. So at a thousand, which we'll put there, there's another, there's another point there. So I'm now gonna redraw my graph on my CAS with a particular window in mind. So we're gonna go from, we're gonna go from minus 10 and we're gonna to go to about 1200. And we're gonna have scale of about 50 grams. Uh, we have a, a Y minimum of minus 10 and a maximum, we are going to say 800. And we'll also do it in 50 gram increments. And now we have this. So my 652 line is going to go Off like that and then I'm gonna have another line that comes in from the top like that now obviously you're gonna use your ruler you're gonna map this properly I'm doing this quick and so the only other point that we need to find is that one there because we have this one here we have this here we have this shaded region right here we just need to find that point as well, which we can do on our CAS analysis, G solve intersection, and it comes up as 727.277273, comma, 2727277. Yeah, <laughs> we'll keep going. All right, again, 
you've shared the feasible region. So now what we need to do is I'm assuming this is going to be a maximize problem. Write an objective function that will allow the runner to determine how much he eats. So we want to find the maximum amount of weight that he can eat. So whatever we want, so what we want to do is we just, we just want to maximize um, X plus Y, All right? But normally we would give you extra pieces of information like, you know, food weighs a certain amount, but all we want to do is we want to figure out how much can he eat? How much can he eat? We take the X value and the Y value, we add them together. So the objective function is going to be equal, so ob is going to be equal to x plus y. So we're going to take those corner points, we want to add them together to get a particular amount. So determine the maximum weight of food that can be consumed prior to running the marathon. Well, these are all in grams, so it looks like a kilogram because he can do it he can do it by eating 727 grams of x which is oatmeal and 272.7 grams of banana. Or the other option is that he eats nothing. Or he, he eats, he doesn't eat any oatmeal or he does sorry he doesn't eat any oh, i can't remember which one's which <laughs> is my blue line that one or that one so let's go let's go back to our original equate so go back to main so this first equation this one here that is for oatmeal well, that's for carbs. So that's our carbs equation and that's our So one gram so remember that's our so we've got a carbs equation and an oatmeal equation. Oh sorry, yeah, carbs and a protein equation. X is protein, Y, sorry, X is oatmeal, Y is banana. So the first equation that we put into our CAS is our carbs constraint, and then we have our oatmeal constraint. So, based on what we've got, The maximum weight of food allowed is a kilogram, but he can do it in one of in two different ways. He can either eat seven hundred and something grams of oatmeal and two hundred seventy-two grams of banana, or he can eat. Analysis, desolve, 
he can eat a thousand <laughs> he can eat a thousand grams of uh a thousand grams of oatmeal and no <laughs> and no banana. But they both add to a thousand. What is the weight of the protein and carbohydrates eaten by in the banana? Eaten. Well, in this one here, he's eaten 272.7 uh, grams of banana. So going back to the original equation, so it's this here, the 0 0.02, 0 0.02. So that's going to be 0 0.02 times that and 0 0.02, and 0 0.2, so 0.2, that. 0.23 and 0.02. You're going to add them together. And then you'd add them together, that's one mark. And then the weight of the protein in, so that's 720, 127, 27.27 grams. And that's going to be times by 0 0.12 plus 0 0.12 times 727.27. Add them up and you'll get the total weight of oatmeal, of protein and carbs in the oatmeal. And then the last question, the runner has oatmeal packets that contain 150 grams of oatmeal. Assuming the runner eats oatmeal in whole packets only, provides at least one combination of oatmeal and banana that they could run, eat while still meeting the original constraint. So he's got a hundred, so we need to come up with a combination of oatmeal and banana, but the oatmeal is in packets of 150. So whatever we decide has to be eaten for the oatmeal, has to be a multiple of 150. So in this case here, we know that to achieve optimal weight or optimal amount of food, he has to eat 727 grams. But unfortunately, 727 does not divide into 150. 750 does, but if you eat 750, you're going to go over your budget. So what you'd have to do is go down. So then you would have to eat four packets of oatmeal, which is 600. And then you would have to make up the difference with banana. So the question is how much banana would you need to eat if you ate 600 grams of oatmeal? While still meeting the original constraint means that everything that we've done on the graph still applies. So 600 is going to be on this blue line. So it's 600. So it's not a corner point, but it's still important to recognize that he's going to then need to eat, what does it say there? 330, 340 grams of banana. So you can, so you can get away 339.13. Of banana and still meet that original constraint because that is within the feasible region. That's the way I would look at it anyway.